Okay, here we go with our uh, second video. In this video, I'm going to go over uh, Project One. We're, I'm just going to walk you through it from start to finish. Uh, let's take a look at the project first. Right, it's uh, create a basic animation using effects and presets. Uh, create a new project, and then we're going to use a preset, which is this right here. So over here to File, New, New Project, and that's Control alt n for a hotkey. I had a question, uh, I'm going to answer it. What happens if you accidentally make your windows go away or your, your panels disappear? So let's say I accidentally closed my project window, all of a sudden it disappeared and my composition window stretched to fill the space that was taken away. Because you may, maybe you want to set it up with more room to work with. Let's say I want to get that back. I go to Window and take it down to Project. There, and that brings my project window back. All of your win all of your um, panels are represented here, and you can choose what to show or hide uh, to give yourself more room to work with them. And if you want to reset, you can do that. You go Window, Workspace, Reset Standard and that takes you right back to the factory defaults, so to speak. Next thing, we're going to make a new project, so we go to File, New, New Project, and the hotkey for that is Control alt n so you hit those three keys all together to start a new project, or you can do it this way just by clicking. Okay, so we've got a new project. We're going to um, now create a new composition for that project, so go up here to Composition, New Composition, which is Control n or Command N on a Mac. And it's asking us what our composition settings are going to be. And this is something you can change later on if you decide it needs to be something else. And it's uh, Command K to do that, or um, Control K on a, on a PC. We're going to name our composition Project uh, 1 and use your initials, so a minor KH. I'm going to use a preset, which um, is right here. We have a few built in, and you can create your own, and you can also um, import other presets. But these are some very standard presets. Um, you may be doing stuff for the web or um, television. NTSC is the North American standard for uh, for video and TV. PAL is a European um, standard, which has a little bit of a different format. And then we've got various high def uh, options here. Uh, we're going to go with HDV, HDTV. 720-2997. So we we'll click on that, and there it is. And what that has set is set our aspect ratio, which is here, at 1280 pixels by 720 pixels. 720 pixels uh, is the height, and that means from the top to the bottom of your video, uh, it's 720 pixels in height. And in width, it's uh, 1280 across. Leave your pixel aspect ratio at square pixels and your frame rate at 2997. That is a standard frame rate for uh, TV and video. Leave your resolution at full, but um, you can lower that setting for complicated projects that you need to you need to watch in uh, real time because things will slow down if the computer's got to work really hard. Uh, so that that may be an option if you're working with something very complicated. Set our start time code at zero, which is the default, and our duration will be seven seconds. Time code is read hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And that's all separated by semicolons. And then hit OK. Right, well, we're already halfway through the project. We've taken care of one through five of um, our requirements here. So we've used a preset. We have set our aspect ratio of 1280 by 720. We've set our frame rate to 2997, and we've made sure our duration is set at 7 seconds. And the way time code reads, uh, it's separated by semicolons. First one is hours, the next one is minutes, and the one after that is seconds, and the one after that is frames. Time code is very important because it's a roadmap through the whole project or video, whatever it is. If you, you have several people working on a project, and you give someone a time code number, they know exactly what you're talking about. They know exactly what frame of the film or commercial or whatever it is you're working on. They know exactly what part of that film you're talking about. It's uh, 
it's sort of like a, like a language of video. And we have named our composition. So our next move here is to put some text in there. And we're, all we're going to do for the text is our first and last name. And um, you can do it one line above the other, or you can do them in a row if you want, whatever's, um, whatever you prefer. And we're going to make sure that we use our um, a, a standard font, one that's on every computer, like Arial and Times New Roman and so on. To add a text to your project, you want to come over to this icon right here, which is your type tool. Go ahead and click that, and then you can uh, click on your screen and put your text in. So there's mine. I'm actually just going to make that two rows. And let's make it a little bigger. So in order to select your whole text, you just come over to the icon here. Notice it changes to what you wrote on there to help you find it if you have a lot of stuff going on here helps you to find it if it's already labeled for you, so that's nice. So double click on the T, and that's highlighted the text, um, which makes it now alterable. And over here in your characters panel, which will pop up automatically when you are working with text, it'll give you some information on what you're, what's going on with your text. So we're at 28 pixels. All you gotta do is mouse over it, and you'll see the icon change to the pointing hand with the arrows. And you can just click and drag, and it will change that number for you, and it'll change the size of your text. So I'm just going to make it a little bigger. Say, let's call it, make it 60. And um, you've got all sorts of other settings for your text. If you work with text in other programs, like uh, Photoshop or Illustrator, Word documents, and so on, these are all adjustments you can make to your text. But we're going to keep this as it is. And remember, keep it highlighted if you're going to make these changes because you can make changes to just like one word in a sentence by highlighting just that word. We're going to do everything, so I'm highlighting the whole thing. So let you choose your font. Um, I was on Arial, so I'm just going to change it to Times New Roman just to, just to change it to show you how to do that. There we go. So I'll click on that. Now we're going to want to move it. So in order to move your text, you want to switch over to your selection tool. So click that, and you'll notice you get a little you get little handles around here. If you click and drag a handle, you can you can alter your, your text that way. Uh, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. And this little icon here is your anchor point, and we'll get into anchor points uh, later on in the class. You don't want to move that though, so if you're going to move this thing, just click somewhere other than the center and other than these little handles. So I'm just going to click right there and then and drag and I can move my text around. So I'm moving it right over here to the right hand side of the screen. Let's come down here and have a look at what's going on there. So this is our text layer. The little T also indicates that it's a text layer rather than something else, so that's helpful. We know that our project is seven seconds long and as you can see we can only see five seconds worth of project here so what we have down here is your zoom and you can zoom on your timeline to get really specific right down to the individual frame if you want to so let's drag it to the right and we're zoomed in as far as we can zoom in and we can see frame by frame one two three uh, all the way up to, to the first nine frames as you know you can move your panels around and uh, give yourself more room and if you zoom the other way we go all the way out. So now we can see the entire project start to finish, zero, frame zero to uh, all the way to seven seconds. We can watch our video. Uh, if you want, you can um, preview it. So you've got a standard set of play fast forward controls that are any video you, you watch works the same way. Uh, so we're going to hit um, play. And obviously nothing is happening because we haven't added any animation, but if you look down here, you can see our little line go, and that's indicating where it is going on the timeline as it plays. That'll make a little bit more sense in a second when we animate the text. Also with these, um, with the time controls, you can uh, move your, your current time indicator, which is what the red line is, and you can grab it by this little yellow guitar pick looking thing and you can move it around. And this is called scrubbing the timeline. Let's go ahead and animate the text. That way you can get a better sense of what's going on here. We're going to move our current time indicator. You can drag it over or 
you can go over here to first frame. You've got you can go frame by frame or you can go all the way to the first or the last. So I'm going to go to the first frame. Now we're going to add a transform to this text. The don't worry about this where it says text because we're going to we're going to get into that in the next uh, project. For this purpose, we're just going to use a transform, which works for anything. If you put a picture on there and you just want it to slide across the screen, you can do that with this as well. And just about every kind of layer allows you to make these sort of transformations. We're going to go to position. And if you look over here, this is showing you where our text is on the screen. That's, that's the coordinates for our piece of um, text and I believe it keys right on the anchor point. And this is something you can drag and move around. So if we grab a hold of our first number, click and drag, you'll see it goes as the number goes up and down, our text moves left and right. So that is the horizontal set of coordinates. And guess what happens if you do this? Click that and drag it, move it up and down, and there you go. So notice the number gets lower as you go up and higher as you go down. So let's see, we go get a low number and then drag this to a low number. So that means zero, zero is this top left hand corner. And if you just drag your, your item, move it around, take a look next to position, you'll see those numbers are changing. So one way or the other, um, what you do to one changes the other. So you, if you prefer to be very, very precise with your numbers, then that can be very handy. Uh, or if you, you're just kind of free-forming it and um, you're going to eyeball it, you can do it that way. Now, this is your stopwatch, and this will turn on animation and create a keyframe. And we are at uh, frame one. We're going to hit. We're going to hit this, and we've turned it on. We've now turned on animation for position, and we've created a little keyframe, which is this little yellow diamond over here. So next thing we're going to do is go all the way to the last frame, which you can do by clicking to the end, or you can just drag it over. And we've still got this turned on. That means any changes we make, we're creating new keyframes. So nothing's happened yet because I haven't moved anything, but if I move my text, and I'm going to do it this way so I get a get it goes in a perfectly straight line. Just drag it over to there. So I have a new position. It's, it hasn't changed up and down, but it has changed left and right. So this number has changed. You've got keyframes. You have, have two keyframes now because something has changed with our object and we're set to animate it. Once you've got it animated, we want to see how uh, this animation looks. So let's go to the first frame. So up here to first frame, boom, all the way over. Notice the name has flipped over to the side. We're going to preview it. So we're just going to hit the play button and off it goes. This uh, line is, is a visual aid for you to tell um, the uh, trajectory of what you're of your animation, it's not going to show up in your final project when you render your video, but it's there to help you tell what's going on. Let's stop it right in the center here. So I hit uh, play pause again to stop it. My position stopwatch is still depressed, right? That's still um, on. So if I make a change, it's going to make a change and it's going to add a keyframe. So stop your animation more or less right in the center and let's drag our other our right set of numbers and we'll go let's go down a little bit let's make a okay so notice our line has bent along with it so we have three keyframes now we have one two three one two three and so uh, to give you an idea Let's go between the first and the second keyframe. Let's if we drag this over here, where is our text going to go? It's going to go right there. There it goes. So your keyframes are very handy because they tell you where you are in your animation. 
as a general rule, try to keep your keyframes as few as possible because the more keyframes you get, the more complicated it gets, and oftentimes the more awkward it might appear. To recap what we're doing here, um, we've, we've created our text. We're using the transform to animate the position of the text. And we're going to begin on the right hand side and finish on the left. And we're doing ours with three keyframes. So here we go. Let's hide that. So here are our three keyframes. Let's let's go ahead and watch the watch it in uh, something like this is probably going to render in in real time, so to speak, which is you're going to get an indicator up here. It's not going in real time right now because it's running it for the first time, but now it's in memory, so it is in real time. And it'll just continue to repeat. This little green uh, bar down here indicates that each frame has been cached or is in memory. And if it's in memory, then it can play it at real time. If it can't memorize the entire project, uh, then it can't play it in real time. But something uh, very simple like something like this, it's pretty easy. But if you have a, a complicated project, you may only be able to like play three seconds of it in in real time, or even one second of it in real time. Now, say we want to preview it without looking at that our little timeline with our Bezier curved handles, um, which you can you can move by the way. You can uh, you can adjust the way your animation moves with uh, things like this. And if you've ever worked with After Effects, I'm sorry, with um, with uh, Illustrator or Photoshop and and curves and handles, um, it's, it works pretty much the same the same way. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a kink in it there just to do something unusual. Maybe maybe alter that a bit too. There we go. And notice these little dots. If you mouse wheel, you can that's roll your mouse wheel. You can zoom in and out if your cursor is over your your um, composition window. You can see these little dots. Each one of those indicates a frame. So as my line got longer because I stretched it, because I bent it, you start to see those um, those keyframes a little bit more clearly because they're more spread out because it's covering the same amount of distance. Um, I'm sorry, it's it's covering more uh, distance, but in the same amount of keyframes. So it's spread out a little bit more at the beginning part. So let's let's um, preview it again real quick. So off we go. So that's kind of fun. And now it's run through one time. It's managed to get it into um, into RAM. So it'll run it at full speed. And you can tell if it's full speed by checking right here. So it may pop out every once in a while. Uh, but uh, the more times it runs, also the better it runs. So if, if you want to um, see it in real time, sometimes you got to let it run through. And it'll fill in all of its little green, green area here to uh, to run. Okay, we're gonna pause it. So we want to look at it without our um, lines, our um, our indicators here. You can click off that layer, and now um, things like that won't show. So you can you can uh, hit hit play again, and it goes through the same motions, but you don't see your um, your line there to. So you want to make some other adjustments, uh, or make uh, animate some other things. You've got uh, a few options here. Uh, we'll stay away from the anchor point for the for the time being, but let's let's try uh, try scale. So we'll um, put our timeline right about here. We're going to turn on our stopwatch, which is going to, which allows us to animate our scale. By the way, if you turn that off and you make a change to the scale, you make that globally. You make that for every single frame in the whole animation. You've you've just done it overall for everything. So I just made it bigger, and then if I scrub the timeline, it stays the same size, because I did that all the way along the timeline. It's um, animating it that, it, in order to animate it or make it change, that's where you want to hit your stopwatch. So let's say we start at that size. It's created a keyframe for me. And we'll drag along a little bit to, say, here, and let's Let's scale it way down. Maybe it's like it's bouncing into the distance. So we'll take it down a little bit. 
So we've still got our keyframe. So now it changes size. So you've animated both position and scale. A few other things we can do. Uh, let's try uh, rotation, if you like. So remember, if you rotate it without turning on your time, uh, your your stopwatch, you've done it for the whole thing. So off it goes, and it stays turned just like that. All right, so I'm going to animate it. And by the way, what if I was like, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to try to carefully get it back to zero. You can just click and type the number you want. So say I wanted to turn it 90 degrees. I just turn, type in 90 and hit enter. And all of a sudden, bam, it's turned 90 degrees. So you can do things um, by the numbers, if you like, or you can do them more uh, freeform. So I'm going to start, uh, say, like that. Okay, and then I'm going to turn this. Now I'm animating, so I'm turning on my uh, stopwatch. I'm going to move along a little way down the uh, down the timeline, say to about there. Let's rotate that way. Why not? There we go. So now I rotate a little bit. I'm also remember I'm still changing scale, and I'm still moving. And let's. Rotate again. Let's go back, back this way. So there we go. So scrub your timeline and go back and forth, and you uh, get a feel for how your animation is going. You get a feel for your timing. You can test it. Hit uh, hit play. Now it's got a few things going on. So it's slowed down quite a bit. You see your little green line filling in here as it loads into RAM, and there we go. Looks like it missed one frame right here. It'll pick it up on the next run through. Or possibly not. There you have it. But for this project, you really only need to do the position. Just just animate your position. Um, scale and rotation and opacity, they work the same way. Opacity obviously is um, how solid your, um, your text is. I'm just going to drag and it starts to go invisible. It's literally uh, semi-transparent. So if you have something on behind it, it's going to start to show through um, whatever it is that you're creating, whatever it is that you're making less opaque. And you can animate that, of course. So it's uh, it's great for titles. You can make things um, fade out. So why don't I just go to, let's say, right here, which is about half a second before the end of the clip. I'm going to turn that on to animate it. It's created a keyframe right there at 100% opacity. And then I'm going to go all the way to the end and I'm going to drag the opacity down to zero. So now, between here and here, it fades to zero. And that can be easier to see if you hit this twirly, bring that up, click off your layer, and then you scrub it and you can see it, see it fade, fade out. Okay, so that's about it for animating your text. Okay, nearly finished. So next, um, we've got nine, which is include a solid color background. And I recommend using a contrasting color from your text color. I chose a kind of a gold, yellow, yellowish orange, which uh, the opposite of orange on the color wheel would be blue. But at least um, make sure it's a lighter or darker color so um, your text is visible. Don't use the same color. And we're gonna save our project. So let's do that. Okay, in our layers down here, you just pick a blank area and right click and go new, solid. So we get our solid window here and we're gonna change it to a nice uh, dark blue. So we, what you do is click on this little square here, this color square. It's uh, kind of a sort of soft medium like that. Hit OK. And notice up here it's named it medium gray blue solid. So it actually knows what, has a fairly good idea of the color that you put in. So it helps to label it that way. Also, if you wanted to choose your color by picking it with your eyedropper tool, you can click that. And then what, whatever you click on, whatever color it is, that'll be the color of your solid. So 
say I just click here on this gray area, it's going to make my solid gray. It says just dark gray solid. I don't want that. I want to pick a blue. So, but you have that choice if, if you if that's what you want to do. So, okay. And there it is. Now you want to be able to um, move these things around. And the handle for this is this little square right here. So click on the square and then drag down to move your uh, your layers around. If you just click somewhere else, you're going to get this drag box, which is handy for selecting several things at once. But that's not what we want. We want to just move one layer down. So the T in a text layer is the handle, or the box is on a solid as the handle to move it around. So that's how that works. Okay, now uh, we had a black background before, and now we have a blue one, and you'll notice we have uh, an outline around our text. So I'm going to select the text, and if you look over here, there's it's given it a slight stroke of three pixels. Um, you can alter that. You click and drag your stroke. It'll uh, adjust the thickness of the stroke around the text. And I think uh, I think three worked pretty well actually. So let's keep it at three. And you can always click and type. Hit three, enter, and it automatically puts it on there for you. So that's what these boxes are here. This is our text color and this is our stroke color. And uh, so there's your blue solid. And all that is is exactly what it sounds like. It's solid blue uh, put in the background. That is just like your text. It's editable and uh, transformable. But right now it doesn't do anything. Notice my text when it when I have the opacity change there right, right at the end. It's fading to blue. It's not black. It's, it's going to blue because it, all it did was adjust the transparency of the text. Just to recap, we'll, um, we'll adjust the opacity of the blue solid. So let's go to yeah, right about there. Click on opacity, click on the uh, stopwatch. It's created a keyframe there. And we'll just go to, say, right about there. And we'll drag our opacity down to 0%. And that original composition background of, blue, of black is there. So we've caused our blue to alter and turn black. There we go. And everything fades out into into space. Okay, that is that. Now the, the last part to our project is to save your project. And that is pretty simple. Go up here to File and Save As. It's going to give you the default name of After Effects project. I'm going to just call it um, Project 1 and save. And now there you go. And that's it for your first project. Uh, you can send that in and um, go to your Dropbox to send that in. I'll show you how to do that. When you're in Seaport, you just go down here to Dropbox. Click on that. And then Click on Project 1. So once you're in Project 1, choose File, go to wherever you saved it. So remember where you save things. Find your project that you just saved. Make sure it's an AEP, that's an After Effects project. Uh, highlight it, it'll appear down here. It's going to be a little bit different with a Mac, but I'm sure you've dealt with um, saving and moving and uploading files. So there it is. Hit open and upload the file. And off it goes. After Effects files with are, are generally very small unless you're including the footage that you were using, which is important. All right, well, that was project one, so I'll see you next time.